Hello, Sam Akavan from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and today I'm going to present a case of a superior capsular reconstruction under the cuff and present some of the indications for doing this case. Here's the example. This is a 46-year-old male who slipped off a roof, fell onto his arm, with an initial eval revealing forward flexion of about 60 degrees, abduction of 50 degrees, and a positive external rotation lag. On this initial MRI, we saw a large retracted acute tear of the supra and infraspinatus, and his biceps tendon was found to have a partial tear and to be dislocated. The problem was when he came back for his MRI review, while his exam was unchanged and we were ready to proceed with surgery, he let us know that he had to wait due to work issues for about three months until he was ready to have surgery. When he came back for his preoperative evaluation, we discussed with him what the plan would be at the time of surgery. This would include performing a biceps tenodesis using a loop intact tenodesis, and then we talked about the different ways we would be able to address the cuff. The primary plan was to try to repair the cuff. However, if the cuff was not repairable, some of the other issues that we talked about was whether we would do a partial repair of the rotator cuff, augment his rotator cuff repair by placing an arthroflex over the top, or perhaps perform an SCR and try to repair the cuff over the top of that. When we went to the operating room and actually did our initial scope, we found that his biceps was indeed dislocated and a loop intact tenodesis was performed. When we actually evaluated his cuff, we found the cuff to be large, retracted beyond the level of the glenoid, and unfortunately, this barely pulled to the level of the articular margin after mobilization. In order to further mobilize this, we actually went ahead and placed a contraction stitch within the actual rotator cuff itself, and then used that to pull laterally, and with electrocautery as well as an elevator, actually tried to mobilize the cuff going all the way medial to see if we could get it to move any further. Unfortunately, the cuff really did not mobilize any further than this and still barely pulled to the level of the articular margin. At this point, we had several options in terms of what to do with our repair. One option would be to perform a single row repair to the articular margin. Another option would be to perform a partial repair. However, I had serious concern as to the longevity of both of these repair techniques due to the high tension on the repair itself. This is when we decided to actually proceed with an SCR with the potential option of actually repairing the rotator cuff over the top. There are several tips and pearls that I would recommend if you are thinking about doing an SCR under a rotator cuff repair. One of the first things you have to do is you have to actually put your rotator cuff out of the way. So in this case, we knew for a fact that we were gonna proceed with a superior capsular reconstruction. However, we weren't quite sure what we were gonna do with the rotator cuff quite yet. You actually can stuff the rotator cuff medially and pull your traction stitch out of the visor's portal where it will stay retracted for you. You can then proceed with your labral debridement and go ahead and place your medial row anchors. I prefer the three nine knotless corkscrews for this. At this stage, the anterior one has already been placed. We're placing the middle one through the visor's portal, making sure that we stay medial enough so we don't penetrate the articular surface, as you are seeing here. At this stage, we're gonna switch our scope over to the lateral portal. And from the posterior aspect, go ahead and place our posterior portal into the glenoid. Again, visualizing to make sure that there's no penetration of the articular surface of the glenoid. For the lateral row anchors, you wanna make sure that you are right at the articular margin. Your anterior one should be right essentially where your rotator cuff insertion is gonna be. However, for your more posterior one, one of the things that you can do if you do not think it's gonna come far enough over is you can sheet your more posterior anchor right into the bare area as we are doing in this case. Occasionally, what I've done in cases where the cuff will not completely reduce is I've actually put an even more posterior anchor and used that to actually reduce the cuff prior to doing my rotator cuff repair or my SCR repair. Some tips and pearls for graft preparation, if you're gonna do a superior capsular reconstruction under the cuff, is you wanna make sure that you cut your graft slightly smaller than usual. From an A to P standpoint, I will make sure that we only cut five millimeters extra. Laterally, I will make sure that we only cut 10 millimeters extra. And part of the reason for this is you don't want your graft extending too far beyond your rotator cuff after it is fixed laterally. From a suture passage standpoint, you wanna make sure that you give yourself a two to three millimeter margin from the edge when you pass your sutures. Remember that with the slightly smaller graft, your graft will stretch slightly more, which is not necessarily a bad thing. However, you wanna make sure that you have a safe margin so the sutures do not tear through your graft. Finally, this is for all SCRs, I would recommend that you change out your scorpion needle after you've passed them through the arthroflex graft prior to doing any intraarticular work. Once your graft is passed, there are several pearls that I would recommend in order to make sure that the rest of the case goes smoothly. 
first of all, you're gonna tension your graph medially, but then tension it again. You can see here that we have our cuff retracted back with the suture actually being pulled through the visor's portal. We have passed our lateral sutures through the graph, but we're now gonna remove them from the cannula through the poke holes that we use to actually place the anchors so that we have a good working portal through our passport cannula. At this stage, what you're gonna notice is that the graft can be tensioned a little bit more, so we're gonna go ahead and do this prior to cutting our sutures. And this is one of the key aspects. Once you're gonna reduce your cuff over the top of this, your sutures will not be visible anymore. The other thing is the sutures can actually get in the way of you reducing your cuff, so you wanna make sure that you cut them prior to the next step of the procedure. One of the key aspects that you're gonna find at this point is that the cuff actually will pull over laterally significantly more than it did at the beginning of the case. Part of the reason for this is the graft, just in this position without being fixed, has actually depressed the humeral head enough that you actually have a lot more excursion to the cuff to get it back to its original footprint. At this stage of the game, you also wanna make sure that you fix your graft to the posterior cuff. Again, once your rotator cuff has been pulled over, you are not gonna be able to see this aspects to be able to do your repair. So now is the time to do it. I typically will make sure that at this point, my again, my scorpion needle has been changed from the scorpion needle that I used for initial passage of the sutures through the arthroflex graft. I will look from lateral, come in from my posterior portal using a scorpion to pass the sutures, and then tie anywhere between two to three sutures posteriorly in order to reduce the posterior cuff to the graft. This is a very important aspect of it if you wanna to try to reduce external rotation in the patients, uh, and I would make sure that you do that in all of your patients. At this point, we're gonna pass our sutures through the rotator cuff. You wanna make sure that you do not pass these sutures too medial. Remember two separate things. The first thing is, when you're passing these sutures through the cuff, you wanna pass them at the spot where you want the cuff to reduce to the articular margin. The other thing to remember is that your superior capsular reconstruction graft is right underneath, and it will be actually protective to these sutures actually tearing out of the rotator cuff. In this particular case, I actually cut all four sutures and made four separate passes in order to get good uh, fixation within the cuff and be able to pull it over where I wanted it to go. Once the sutures have been passed through the rotator cuff, you can proceed with your second row fixation. One of the key aspects to this is to tension your rotator cuff over the SCR to reduce it to the footprint. One of the other key aspects is this is the time if you're gonna put a link to put a link in the rotator cuff only. Remember that your rotator cuff will actually reduce any dog ears that you have in your superior capsular reconstruction once the cuff is actually reduced. Here's our final fixation. You can see that the rotator cuff has been reduced significantly further than it was at the initial portions of the case. The SCR is underlying the rotator cuff repair with excellent fixation over the top. Postoperatively, while these patients will do very well, I would strongly recommend to you to use your large cuff protocol, whatever that happens to be. For me, this includes immobilizing the patients for a period of two to three weeks, followed by passive range of motion only for six weeks, followed by active range of motion until 12 weeks, and no strengthening until the 12 week mark. I typically will quote to these patients six to nine months before return to full activities. Typically, the nine months is more for laborers, as I typically will request a little longer time for these patients. Our experience to date has been with four patients ranging in age from 46 to 63 years old that had this uh, procedure performed. This is actually the 46 year old who came into clinic at six weeks having taken off his sling already. Uh, as you can tell, he is able to raise his arm above his head. I very quickly told him not to do that, but I didn't obtain a video first before telling him not to do that anymore. In most cases, because of the biomechanical advantage that the SCR provides under the cuff, I'm actually much more comfortable with these patients with allowing them to progress. In conclusion, if you're gonna do a superior capsular reconstruction under the cuff, remember that this is a true no harm, no foul procedure. You're doing a superior capsular reconstruction anyway. If your rotator cuff will pull over, go ahead and pass your sutures through and repair it over laterally. It provides you a biomechanical advantage over the standard techniques we've done in the past, including both single row repairs with knots as well as partial repairs, and is a great option when the cuff will reduce just short of the articular margin. Thank you.